to be good good morning again to you and um you know there's some interesting information coming out um in the public domain and i think i would love to play it for you so some of you need to join me on facebook and on youtube because i am about to play you some information that i think i need to play um play for you right about now so if you join me on Facebook and on YouTube, I'll be playing you the information right about now. All right. Um, many of you would know that um, the opposition leader have been making statements. And uh, I think that this is going to become a really, I think this is it. This is, this might just be it for Ms. Bissessa. I don't know. I don't know for anybody else, but I feel this is her last hurrah. And um, in her last hurrah, I think she is now really, she is on the verge of, um, I don't know. I don't know what, what, what to say, really. All right? Um, but if you join me on Facebook and on YouTube, I want to play you the press conference from Mr. Ramesh Lawrence Maraj. So all my Facebook people, all my YouTube people, if you join me now, I want to play you a a uh, statement from, uh, or not a statement, but the press conference from Mr. Lawrence Maraj, which I think uh, most of you should really try to get your hands on. And I think this is where people should be more aware of now coming to the understanding that Ms. Bissessa is not good for this country. All right? I, I, I hold no qualms. I, I see it as it is. I'm seeing it as it is. Some people try to butter you up and make you feel as to whatever. I am saying, based on what I've heard in this recording and this press conference from Mr. Maraj, I think Ms. Bissessa is not good for this country. You may think differently, um, you have your right to. 
I have my right to think differently also. So I'm asking you, join me now on Facebook, join me now on YouTube. Just type in the Street 919 FM on Facebook, also on YouTube. You type in Iowa TV and you will see me there. And if you come on to Iowa TV and you come on to YouTube, on to Facebook, you will be able to hear and see statements from Mr. Mirage. All right? And you tell me after I play it, I'll take your calls. And I really want to play this because of the caller who call in. And the callers that was calling in and was trying to implicate the government and implicate the mm, the the um, attorney general in this whole thing. I want to play this for you. I really want to play it for you, you know. I really want to play it for you today. So um looking to see if you're coming on. All right, once you're on, share the live. Somebody say, share the live. La Romaine is here. Hey, La Romaine, how are you going? I want to talk to you, La Romaine. I need to get in contact with you, Miss La Romaine. I want to talk to you. So share the live. Share the live, share the live. We're going on. We're going to hear what Mr. Maraj have to say. All right? So I'm going to play it for you now. All right, I'm going to play it for you now. So I'm not going to hold back anymore. I'm not going to wait for anybody else. So come on the live. I'm going to play what Mr. Maraj had to say at his press conference yesterday. Listen to what Mr. Maraj had to say yesterday, Trinidad and Tobago. All right, thank you for coming on and thank you for being a part of the discussion or the topic today. Listen to this, Trinidad and Tobago, and you tell me what you think. And the Prime Minister. Two days after those allegations were made by the leader of the opposition, Mr. Wilfred Espini, chairman of Petrotrin, made public statements which implicitly supported the allegations made against ANV by the leader of the opposition. Petrotrin thereafter embarked, embarked upon an investigation into the allegations. In conducting those allegations, however, Petrotrin refused continuously the request made by ANV for Petrotrin to consult with ANV and its legal team in order for ANV to give answers to all of the allegations made by the leader of the opposition. ANV contended in its letters to Petrotrin and in the media conferences which I held that the allegations made by the leader of the opposition were not true. The leader of the opposition based the statement she made about ANV and the Prime Minister on a preliminary document marked private and confidential. It was a preliminary internal report of Petrotrin. That report was not a final report. It was not even signed by the two auditors, alleged auditors. It was therefore not a complete report. It was signed by one of the alleged auditors. ANV also did not have any opportunity to comment on any of the allegations or statements made in that report. So that document, on the face of it, was shown to be private and confidential and was not a complete and final report. At the media conferences, which I held, and the letters which were written to Petrotrin, ANV took the position that the allegations made by the leader of the opposition and contained in that internal document upon which she relied were totally incorrect. ANB requested Petrotin to state to it any particulars of the allegations that wanted ANB to answer and that ANB was prepared to answer those allegations and for Petrotin to hold consultations with ANB, for ANB to convince and confront Petrotrin that the allegations were untrue. Petrotrin, however, took the position that it would give ANV a hearing and hold consultation at the right time. Petrotrin, however, never did that. It conducted a one-sided investigation in breach of every existing rules of procedural fairness and natural justice. Petrotrin retained foreign experts, Cole Consulting Canada and Kathleen Klein and Associates, 
but it refused to permit those experts to consult with a and in respect of the allegations so that a and would have been able to give to those experts whatever answers or explanations they wanted in answer to any of the allegations. Petrotin also took the position that although it intended to rely on the reports of Kroll and Kapni Klein, that those reports were private and confidential and were therefore not for the eyes of a &B and its lawyers. It was only for the eyes of Petrotin. Petrotin made it clear in its public statements and letters to a &B that it intended to rely on the Kroll and Kapni Klein reports but a &B could not see those reports to answer the allegations of findings because they were private and confidential to Petrotin. In the media conferences I held, I informed the public of all of these matters. I, I, I told the public, I told members of the public that the newly appointed chairman of Petrotin implicitly supported these allegations and Petrotin commenced investigations against PNB. In other words, Petrotin accepted the call of the leader of the opposition. I informed the public at these press conferences that I and the legal team of ENB have reviewed the allegations made against ENB. We have looked at the evidence provided to us by ENB and we have looked at the allegations made by the leader of the opposition and the internal audit report. And that I and the legal team were totally convinced that the allegations made against EMB were totally false. I made several requests of Petrotin to hold consultations with EMB so that we would be able to convince Petrotin that it was going in the wrong direction. We told Petrotin that we could give response to any queries it had in respect of any of the matters relating to the supply by a &B of crude oil to Petrotrin. Petrotrin did not make any request for any information until a few days before it terminated the contract. And Petrotrin did not accede or request for it to hold consultation with us. In my media conferences, I also warned Petrotrin publicly that if it terminated the contract with a &B, that that action of Petrotrin would cause the taxpayers of Trinidad and Tobago millions of dollars to pay for the expenses which would be incurred by Petrotrin in such a legal battle, and for Petrotrin to also pay the expenses and fees which a &B would have incurred in fighting such a battle. I also told the country that that is separate and apart from what a tribunal may order in respect of damages or wrongful termination of the contract, if such, if the contract was terminated. I told the country that we were totally conf confident that if Petrotrin wanted to go the route of an arbitration, by, the, by terminating the contract, a and &B would be vindicated. Petrotrin did not listen. Petrotrin decided that it would terminate the contract. It stated in a letter to a &B that based on the Kroll and Kapni Klein report, it was of the opinion that a and &B misconducted itself, but that it was, given a &B, it was giving a and &B seven days to respond to 13 issues which it stated it wanted, with it, it wanted at the end of seven days. Petrotin was therefore telling A and B, Petrotin thinks you are guilty. It has found you are guilty based on the reports of Kafni Klein and Kroll. But Petrotin is still giving you seven days to respond to these 13 issues. A and B did it best in those seven days to respond to all the issues, obviously handicapped by time. Petrotrin, therefore, 
had made up his mind to terminate the contract without properly considering the representations and the evidence of ANB. After ANB provided the answers to the 13 issues, best it could have done it in the seven days, Petrotrin decided to terminate the contract. That was an overview of this matter. And with that introduction in mind, I would now trace with you the history of this matter leading to the arbitration. The claim before the arbitrators were for damages for wrongful termination by Petrotrin of the contract which Petrotrin entered into with ANB for ANB to explore, extract, supply, and sell crude oil to Petrotrin from the Caxton field. The written contract between Petrotrin and ANB provided that in the event that there was a dispute between the parties, they first had to try to resolve the dispute by mediation. And if mediation failed, the dispute was to be resolved by a panel of three arbitrators. The contract gave the right to Petrotrin and to ANB to each appoint one arbitrator and for the third arbitrator to be appointed by the agreement of both ANB and Petrotrin. Petrotrin, after it terminated the contract, the dispute arose and therefore it had to be determined um, after mediation failed um, by a panel of three arbitrators. The three arbitrators were Petrotrin's choice of the arbitrator and who was appointed as an arbitrator was Justice Humphrey Stolmeyer, who was a former judge of Trinidad Tobago and also a former judge of appeal of the Court of Appeal of Trinidad Tobago. ANB's appointee choice of arbitrator was Lord David Hope a retired judge of the Judicial Committee of the Privy Council, which is the final court of appeal for Trinidad and Tobago. Both ANV and Petrotrin agreed on the third arbitrator as the chairman of the panel. That person was Sir Dennis Byron, who was the former president of the Caribbean Court of Justice. So it would be seen quite readily that the panel of arbitrators was a very experienced, distinguished panel. The Court of Appeal of Trinidad and Tobago decides cases. They have, some, they have in some cases, they can decide it finally. In other cases, the Privy Council is the final court for Trinidad and Tobago. The Caribbean Court of Justice is the final court of appeal for countries, for some of the countries of the Caribbean. So you would have seen that the judges who served on the Privy Council who served on the Caribbean Court of Justice, who served on the, on the Court of Appeal, but judges who were eminently qualified to do this job. And these were the judges with, who, the, who the parties agreed to to determine this appeal, this dispute. The panel of arbitrators, um, as I mentioned, um, were agreed to by both ANV and Petrotrin. But the parties also agreed in the contract, that is ANV and Petrotrin, in Article 36, that the decision of the arbitrators shall be final and binding, shall not be subject to review or appeal, and the parties agree to waive their right to any form of review, appeal, or recourse to any state court or other judicial authority insofar as such waiver may be validly made. It was therefore envisaged by both Petrotrin and ANB when this contract was signed that if there was a dispute, they would agree to have an arbitration and they would be bound by the decision given by the arbitrators chosen by them and would therefore have confidence and regard that their findings were final and not subject to review or appeal and delay attempt to avoid the outcome. The panel consisted, as I said, of eminent judges of international reputation whose decisions ought to have much greater weight. The chairman of the panel of arbitrators was the former 
president of the Caribbean Court of Justice, which, as I said, is the final appellate court for some of the countries of the Caribbean. His judgments are reflected in the law reports of the Commonwealth, and he's recognized as an eminent international jurist by the legal profession, not only in the Commonwealth, but throughout the world. Similarly, the presence of Lord Ho, the former Privy Council judge, would also add to the weight of the findings made by the panel of arbitrators. Lord Ho is of the most um, accomplished judges of the Privy Council. He, he has given leading judgments in commercial law, he reported in most of the Commonwealth law reports, and he has had, since his retirement, experience in arbitration on the international scene. Last but not least, Justice Humphrey Stolmeyer, a former judge of the High Court and a former Justice of Appeal of the Court of Appeal of Trinidad and Tobago, who apart from his recognized academic and judicial ability, is well familiar with the energy industry in Trinidad and Tobago and would also add great weight to the decision and findings made by the panel of arbitrators. I have decided to give the members of the public, the members of the media, some context in which this decision was made and in respect of the panel which made this decision. Let me now go to the statements of the leader of the opposition at the political meeting. On Sunday, the 10th of September 2017, during a UNC political meeting at Cuba, the leader of the opposition relied on a Petrotrin internal audit report, which, as I mentioned to you, was a preliminary report, dated 17 August 2017, which was marked private and confidential. It was not signed by the senior auditor, one of the alleged auditors. It was a preliminary incomplete report, not a final report. To this day, we do not know, but can only imagine how it came to be in the hands of the opposition leader. The leader of the opposition, referring to the contents of that internal audit report, stated that ANB overstated its production of crude oil over a six-month period, and that ANB was getting payment from Petrotrin for the supply of, of the so-called fake oil. She accused ANB and its owner, Mr. Hannes Bach, of a conspiracy with Petrotrin officials to overstate the actual production by ANB of crude oil and that ANB was being paid by Petrotrin for crude oil, which Petrotrin did not receive. The leader of the opposition stated that ANB was selling this crude oil to Petrotrin as fake oil, which ANB never produced, and which oil was much more than ANB could have stored in a storage tank. She accused ANB of committing fraudulent and criminal acts. The leader of the opposition then linked the Prime Minister of Trinidad and Tobago, Dr. Keith Rowley, with Mr. Bach. The implication being that the Prime Minister was also involved in the alleged misconduct with ANB. She stated that the ANB and its owner, Anish Bach, were financiers of the PNM and that Mr. Bach was a close friend of the Prime Minister. This political meeting which the leader of the opposition addressed but broadcasted live on several local radio and television stations. And it was also brought, broadcasted on the World Wide Web via UNC's website and the Facebook page of the leader of the opposition. As a matter of fact, the video recording of this political meeting of the 10th of September 2017 remains posted on the opposition leader's Facebook page. Prior to the publication by the leader of the opposition of these allegations, Petrotrin had not taken any action on these unfounded allegations against ANV or Mr. Bach. Petrotrin had not even informed Mr. Bach of any such audit report or any such allegations which were being made against or hit, against, against him or against ANV for allegedly overstating the supply of crude oil to Petrogen. The conclusion drawn is that Petrogen had not come to the view from its internal audit report that the leader of the opposition so quickly reached with no evidence. However, based on the statements made by the leader of the opposition, 
Petrogen, then newly appointed chairman, Mr. Wilfred Espini, on the 12th of September, just two days after that statement was made by the leader of the opposition, made a public statement which implicitly repeated the allegations made by the leader of the opposition against the enemy. The leader of the opposition had called upon Petrogen to take action against ENV. Petrogen decided to commence an investigation into the allegation which the leader of the opposition made. The leader of the opposition was not satisfied with that. She took those allegations to the parliament in that it formed the basis for the prime minister to hear question time in parliament to answer a question by the opposition, whether he was a friend of Hamid Nazim Baksh, the owner of ENB. The Prime Minister confirmed that he was a friend of Mr. Baksh for a period of seven years. The leader of the opposition, by taking this issue to the parliament in the context of what was happening at that time, was by her conduct and action further publishing the allegations she made against ENB and the Prime Minister in a statement of the 10th of September 2017. At several public meetings of the UNC, the allegations made against Mr. Baksh and the link of the allegations against Mr. Baksh to the Prime Minister were repeated by the leader of the opposition, which were carried live on the electronic media. These allegations of the supply by ENB of fake oil to Petrotin with the link of the allegations to the Prime Minister were being pushed by the leader of the opposition as part of a political strategy. The leader of the opposition was doing this based on a preliminary audit report which Petronin itself had not acted upon and which was a preliminary report, not a final report. And the leader decided to use this report to make these serious defamatory allegations against my client and the Prime Minister. These allegations continue to be published by the leader of the opposition at a political meeting, notwithstanding the several media conferences I called, in which I publicly called upon Petrotrin and the leader of the opposition to stop making these allegations. I called these conferences from time to time, and I showed that these media conferences for the public to see, for Petrotrin to see, for the government to see, for the opposition to see, that the facts show that ANV had the capacity to drill the oil, the capsule field had the capacity to produce the quantity of oil. ANV had the investments and the machinery to drill the oil. ANV supplied the oil to Petrotrin. The pumps it had, had the capacity to pump the oil. And there was no evidence to show that oil was stolen by anyone. The leader of the opposition had to face, because the leader of the opposition stopped making, um, did not stop making the allegations against ENB, and the lawyers but he had decided to take action against the leader of the opposition. The leader of the opposition was given the opportunity by ANB and Mr. Hanesh Baksh to withdraw the allegation made against ANB and Hanesh Baksh and to apologize and make an offer to pay damages for libel to his reputation and his company's reputation. It was pointed out to her that the allegations she made were false and that she knew that they were false and that they were causing serious damage to the reputation of both Mr. Baksh and ANV. ANV and Mr. Baksh filed a claim against her for damages for libel and claim aggravated and punitive damages against her. The claim for damages for libel against the leader of the opposition by both ANV and Mr. Baksh was on the contention that the allegations she made against ANV and Mr. Baksh could not be supported by any evidence that she could have produced. Further, the leader of the opposition did not make inquiries to ascertain whether there were any grounds to support such allegations. As a result, we contended that the allegations made by her were made recklessly. 
that claim of KNB and Bax against the leader of the opposition for damages for libel pending in the High Court. But the leader of the opposition was not going to stop. The whole motivation from the start was, was not only to use this issue libeling my client, Mr. Baksh, and ANB, but was to use this issue as a political issue, trying to score political points against the Prime Minister. And in the meantime, libeling my client and, and ANB. The leader of the opposition obviously saw this as raw politics and did not care whether the allegations were true or false. It seems as though it suited her politics to be able to go at the Prime Minister and not caring whether, in doing so, she was damaging and possibly destroying the reputation of Mr. Bax, the commercial reputation of his company, and causing his family great distress and suffering. This was not right. This was wrong. This was cheap politics. Petrotrin's refusal to have consultation with ENB. The issues which arise in this matter are not UNC issues. In my view, they are not UNC issues or PLM issues or issues of any political party. It involves national issues and the national interest. Apart from anything else, this issue involves every taxpayer of Trinidad and Tobago. It involves standards of conduct in public life. As one who served in public life, I can tell you there are times when the national interest trumps party political interest. There are times, therefore, when a person in public life must, in, in his or her actions, allow party political interests to be subservient to the national interest. Mr. Wilfred Espy relied on allegations made by the leader of the opposition. He rubber stamped her allegations. He adopted them as if they were his own. And he decided to pursue the call of the leader of the opposition to investigate the allegations against ANB and Mr. Hanif Park. We had no problem to that. We wanted a fair investigation. Between September 2017 to November 2017, I wrote several letters. We wrote several letters to Petrofin. They refused. I called several media conferences in which I informed the public of the baseless allegations being made by the leader of the opposition and Petrofin against the NP, and called upon Petrofin in these conferences to disregard the statements made by the leader of the opposition. I call upon Petrofin to invite us, have consultation with us, show us the allegation. We will produce to you the evidence. Ask us any question. We will give you the, the answer. I told Petrofin in letters and in the media conferences, there was no evidence which Petrofin could have produced to prove that Petrotrin paid ANV for the supply of fake oil. Requests made by ANV in letters written on behalf of ANV and Mr. Bach were for, for, for Petrotrin to hold consultation with us, for Petrotrin to engage with us, for Petrotrin to give ANV the opportunity to demonstrate that it was wrong, that Petrotrin was wrong to demonstrate that Petrotrin was acting on baseless data and information which was contained in that alleged internal audit report. There was no evidence to support that. There was evidence from Petrotrin itself which negative that. There were documentary evidence from departments of Petrotrin which negative all that was being alleged against ANV. Petrotrin kept promising that it would have consultation with ANB at the right time, but those promises were never materialized. Notwithstanding the request made on behalf of ANB for Petrotrin to have consultation with ANB, the then chairman of Petrotrin, Mr. Wilfred Espini, pursued the investigations on the basis of the allegations made by the leader of the opposition on which she relied 
on an incomplete audit report. And Mr. Espini knew from the information we supplied and from the records of Petrotrin that, that those allegations were inconsistent with Petrotrin's records. On the 25th of October 2017, attorneys at law for ANB wrote to Petrotrin stating that ANB observed a media report in which Petrotrin stated that it retained Cruel Consulting Canada to conduct a foreign exam examination into Petrotrin's audit report finding. ANB, as I told you, made attempts to get a copy of that report. Petrotrin said it was private and confidential. Petrotrin said it was going to rely on that report, but we could not see it, we could not answer it. On the 17th of November 2017, Petrotrin, without giving ANB an opportunity to make representations in respect of the cruel report, published a media release in which it stated that the findings contained in the internal audit report were confirmed by Cruel Consultant Canada, also by Kaffney Klein and Associates. Petrotrin did not give ANB the opportunity to consult with Kaffney Klein on its proposed findings in its report. It was therefore a report without any input. ANB. Petrotrin took the position that Cruel and Klein reports were private and confidential, and only it was relying on the contents of those reports. ANB was not entitled to see those to private and confidential. I could tell you that the reports of Kroll and Klein relied on the data in the internal audit report. And if Kroll and Klein had the benefit of talking to us and sharing their concerns with us and giving um, all the evidence we had, which was produced at the arbitration, Kroll and Klein may not have misadvised Petrotrin. But it was Petrotrin's fault because Petrotrin had to conduct a full-scale inquiry, not a partial inquiry, not in respect of the internal audit report, because the internal audit report was based on certain data which didn't have all the relevant facts and didn't consider all the relevant facts. Next issue I want to tell you is how Petrotrin gave ENB seven days to respond. The first time Petrotrin gave ANB an opportunity to respond to allegations it made was in the letter dated the 1st of December 2017, whereby Petrotrin stated that it reviewed the Crow and Kaffney Klein reports, which were private and confidential reports, and formed the view that it had reasonable ground that ENB misconducted itself and was involved in a wrongful or fraudulent activity during the period April 2016 to July 2017. It then set out in that letter 15 issues and reasons for arriving at that opinion and invited A and B to provide its comments not later than seven days of that letter. So while Petrodin had months in which to settle that letter, Petrodin is saying that why we agree on your tune, but you only have seven days to respond. So doing the best it could have done in that short period of time, seven days, ENV answered the allegation. It was clear from the contents of Petrotrin's letter of the 1st of December 2017 that Petrotrin had made up its mind to terminate the contract before it sent that letter. But it was only going through the motion, giving ENV a cosmetic period of seven days to respond to answer the allegation. Despite this, Petrotrin insisted, despite all of this, all of the representation we made, all of the offer we made to show you had no evidence. Petrotrin insisted on ejecting ANV from the field on the ground that it had lawfully terminated the contract and that it resisted ANV attempts in the courts to obtain an injunction to stay for ANV to stay in the field pending the resolution of the dispute. The arbitration nevertheless went ahead and it has now been completed, and ANV has now been vindicated. Consequently, 
the defamatory allegations made against the Prime Minister being connected to this alleged conduct of the ANB can also have been vindicated. But that is what I am saying, and that is what um, other people may say who have, read, who have read the judgment. The question is, the question is, are taxpayers entitled to see the judgment? Are taxpayers entitled to see how these eminent judges dealt with those allegations? Are taxpayers entitled to see what, what comments, if any, were made by the arbitrators in relation to the case of Petrotin and the case of AMB? And I'll come to that in a short while. The leader of the opposition, however, following publication of some matters about this arbitration and its result on the newspaper. At a public meeting on Monday, the 14th of June, instead of making an apology in the light of the publication in the media, that ANB won its arbitration in respect of the termination of the contract, which termination she knew was based on the allegation she made at a public meeting in 2017. She again referred to the 100 million big oil she tried in her statements to give the impression that the arbitrator was that the arbitration was won by ANB on a technicality because the attorney general did not do a proper case in not supplying all of the relevant evidence. This is not totally untrue. It is a misrepresentation of what the leader of the opposition should know of the function of the office of the Attorney General. She served as Attorney General of Trinidad and Tobago for a short period of time. The Attorney General was not responsible for the evidence provided in this arbitration. The Attorney General represents a state. Petrotrin was not under the jurisdiction of the office of the Attorney General. Petrotrin had his own counsel, and the chairman of Petrotrin was answerable to the board of directors of Petrotrin. Was that the arbitration was won by ANB on a technicality because the Attorney General did not do a proper case in not supplying all of the relevant evidence. This is not totally untrue. It is a misrepresentation of what the leader of the opposition should do of the function of the office of the Attorney General. She served as Attorney General of Trinidad Tobago for a short period of time. The Attorney General was not responsible for the evidence provided in this arbitration. The Attorney General represents a state. Petrotrin was not under the jurisdiction of the Office of the Attorney General. Petrotrin had his own counsel, and the Chairman of Petrotrin was answerable to the Board of Directors of Petrotrin. Petrotrin retained his own lawyers. The Attorney General Office would have had nothing to do, the Attorney General or the Office of the Attorney General, from my experience, would have had nothing to do with this case. This was a case in which Petrotrin retained and is on record private attorneys at law. The attorneys at law which Petrotrin retained included Senior Counsel Deborah Peake and Mr. Ra Ravi Hafiz Doom and a private firm of instructing attorneys at law. So the Office of the Attorney General did not have conduct of this case on behalf of Petrogen. The allegation, therefore, that the Attorney General was responsible for not calling the relevant evidence and therefore Petrogen lost the case is totally false. It is curious and startling that a person who served as Attorney General of Trinidad Tobago could go publicly on behalf of a party and to say to the country 
that in a case between Petrotrin and ANV, ANV and Petrotrin, that the Attorney General had jurisdiction over that case. When law students know that Petrotrin is governed by a board of directors, and the board of directors is responsible for those affairs of the company. The Attorney General, as I said, had nothing to do with this case. This was a case, as I said, had its own lawyers. Petrotrin was well represented. It had every opportunity to adduce all its evidence before the arbitrator. Petrotrin, throughout the arbitration proceeding, attempted to take technical points. My conclusion on that is because it really didn't have evidence to answer ANB's case. The reality is that the case was made by a highly respected international panel of arbitrators chosen by both ANB and Petrotrin. So, Madam Leader of the Opposition, understand that. You were wrong. You caused serious harm to my client, to ANB, and as a politician, you owe a duty to apologize. Again, the Leader of the Opposition at the political meeting on Monday, the 14th of June, 2021, demonstrated that she was really interested in her party political interest and her own interest in trying to give the impression to the public that the Attorney General, as a member of the Cabinet, was involved in the arbitration and that the Attorney General did not call the relevant evidence which caused Petrotrin to lose it. The Cabinet was not part of this case. The Cabinet had nothing to do with this case. As Attorney General, I know that when state companies have litigation in court, the Attorney General doesn't interfere in a case. The Cabinet doesn't interfere in those cases. So, the Leader of the Opposition, who served as Attorney General and therefore would have known that the Chairman of the Board of Directors and the Board of itself would have had the responsibility for this case. All right, Trinidad and Tobago, so we're getting ready to go to the news in a short bit. All right, so what I'll do, what I'll do, when you come back from the news, I'll finish off uh, the recording of Mr. Maraj. All right, so when I come back from the news, when we come back from the news, I will finish play um, Mr. Maraj's statements. And... Um, so you will get to hear exactly what he had to say. Um, finish off here what he had to say. All right. So we're going for the news and come back. I hope that you are getting enough information. All right. I hope that you're getting enough information that would make you understand what it is going on in Trinidad and Tobago. I would love to hear Kingsley and... The crew defend this. Really would love to hear them defend this. So we come back after the news. Trinan Tobago, don't touch your dial. Stick and stay right here on the street. 919 FM. So I come back after and I'll finish play off the rest of the um, press conference with Mr. Ramesh Lawrence Maraj. Oh, good. Oh, no, no, no. Assistance. Looking for a safe and relaxed professional massage therapist and nutritionist? Look no further. Nature's Touch with Empress Judy and Associates offers a natural approach to better health. Treat yourself to a professional massage therapy and nutrition advice in a safe and relaxed atmosphere. Rejuvenate your body, mind, and soul at Nature's Touch Therapy. For an appointment, please call... Or WhatsApp 1868 398 8282 or visit our Facebook page. Remember, your health is our responsibility at Nature's Touch.
but life never gives change. Pray all you want, the answer is still wait. Starting to doubt when life starts to frustrate, but wait. Don't lose your faith, time when you're starting to lose patience. Remember the hard days when God saw you through, He was there from the start. So although they're trying to break you, it's Father God who make you. So just keep the song in your heart. See, life can be hard, so hard, so hard. It's no better process, but hold on to God. There is beauty in your stars. It's no better process, but hold on to God. Your foundation steady and not shaken. Your fence but not breaking. Your dark clouds will all soon be gone. Life is hard, so hard. Simpsons Memorial Limited, number 63 Eastern Main Road, Laventille. Internationally accredited funeral directors.